Welcome to Classic Comedy of Old Time Radio. I'm your host, Ron Ecklebarger. Friday is here, and so is The Life of Riley. Today's episode of The Life of Riley is number 196, and it is entitled Riley Meets a Gangster, Burt Lancaster. It originally aired on April 10th, 1948. brings you The Life of Riley. Prell, the shampoo that removes unsightly dandruff, leaves hair radiantly lovely, presents The Life of Riley with William Bendix as Riley and a surprise visit by Burt Lancaster. <laughs> From week to week, Chester A. Riley speculates on the future of his 13-year-old son, Junior. Last week, Junior showed signs of becoming a baseball player. The week before, pilot of a jet bomber. Today, his doting father watches him out in the backyard of the Riley's little California bungalow, and the boy is about to reveal talent for still another profession. What's Junior doing out there, Riley? Uh, He's playing with Egbert Gillis. Well, I can see that, but what's he mixing up in that barrel? Hmm? It's uh, concrete. Ah, uh, uh, looks like our little junior is going to be a building contractor. Lots of money in that. Ah, uh, that's a smart kid I got there. Well, he stopped mixing the concrete. Look, Riley, he's got a gun. But it's just his BB gun. Hey, maybe junior will go into the army for a career. Lots of money in that. <laughs> Great crap games. <laughs> Well, I don't like him playing with a gun. It, it gives boys crazy ideas. Oh, don't worry about Junior. He's okay. My son wouldn't do nothing wrong. He's probably... Riley, just, uh, huh? he's pointing the gun at Egbert. He's making him stand in that barrel of concrete. No, he's pouring more in. He's a gangster. That's your boy. Uh, a gangster. Well, what have you got to say now? Lots of money in that, too. <laughs> I mean, uh... Junior, you stop that. What's a big idea? Oh, we're just playing. Egbert's a stool pigeon, and I'm a mobster, and I'm giving him the business. Now, you cut it out. I don't want you to grow up to be a gangster. Now, get rid of that concrete. Oh, no. Papa took me all afternoon to make it. If you want to play with the concrete, play something sensible, like housing. Egbert can be a war veteran, and you can be a contractor, and... Uh, Never mind. Be a gangster. (laughs) Hi, Peg, I'm home. Well, it's about time. I've been waiting for you. Something wrong? I didn't mean to do it honest, Pop. Junior did something naughty? Naughty? This little roughneck just missed getting himself in jail. Now, wait, Peg. He's not a roughneck. After all, boys will be boys. Even when they go around with guns like hoodlums? (laughs) My Junior's not a hoodlum. I tell you, boys will be boys. (laughs) Well, laugh this off. He took a shot at the window in Green Spreckles Grocery. Here's the bill. Fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars? You roughneck! You hoodlum! What? It was an accident, Pop Honest. Hey, your boy here has got to stop these gangster tricks. That's what I've been talking about. Talk ain't enough. you got to act. Okay, in your room, young man. But, Pop... March! Okay... I'll teach him a lesson he won't forget. Oh, Riley, you're, you're not going to hit him. No, of course not. He's a big boy. He's liable to hit me back. <laughs> Young man. Yeah, Pop? Junior, I got to have a serious talk with you. You got to stop this stuff. But, Pop, I was I just... I ain't really blaming you. It's them crime movies you go to. They put ideas into your head. Well, no, they don't. Yes, they do. What was the last movie you saw? Well, um... Well, it was one with Esther Williams. Oh. Well, that can put ideas into your head, too. (laughs) What ideas? Remind me to have another talk with you after this talk. (laughs) Meanwhile, let's stick to this gangster business. Well, it's just pretend, Pop. My club was putting on a play, and I got the part of a leader of a tough mob. Oh, I get it. You think it's smart to be a gangster. You think it's nothing but thrills, easy money. You like to look up to these big shots. Well, no, I don't, Pop. Believe me, son, these gangsters ain't nothing much. 
You may think they're heroes, but they're all yellow rats. Well, I saw a movie where oh, one... Oh, sure, the movies. That's just make-believe. Let me tell you this true story of a gangster. Happened in Brooklyn years ago. There was a young boy just like yourself. Good-looking, brainy. But the brakes was against him. Whenever he did something wrong, his old man, instead of reasoning with him, he put him across his knee and whacked him. He'd whack him and whack him and whack him. And what was the result? He became a dead-end kid. <laughs> He began to steal. First, it was just little things like apples off of push carts, and then bigger things, watermelons. <laughs> soon he was holding up banks. One crime led to another. Pretty soon he was the king of the rackets. Everybody was scared of him. But then, like all crooks, one day the law caught up with him. A stool he put the finger on him. Next thing he knew, he was in the death house. The day got closer when it was his turn to go, and everybody wondered the same thing. Would he go like a man or would he crack? Then they came for him, but still he didn't crack. Step by step, they came closer and closer to the little green door. Would he break? Would he crack now? Slowly, they opened the little green door. He could see the chair. And then his nerve snapped. He shook like the yellow rat that he was. He began screaming, I don't want to die. I don't want to die. They had to carry him to the chair. They stabbed him in and he kept on screaming until they pulled the switch. Son, that no good yellow whimpering rat was Chester Riley. <laughs> Pop, what are you trying to hand me? If they pull the switch on you, how come you're still alive? No juice. <laughs> The warden forgot to pay the electric bill. <laughs> and let that be a lesson to you, Junior. Well, so much for Riley's views on gangsters. Brave words indeed. But as they say in the daytime serials, little does our hero know that before another 24 hours have elapsed, he will come face to face with a real gangster. And now, let's take a look at this ruthless killer. Observe him closely. The small, close-set eyes, the prison pallor, <laughs> the thin, cruel mouth, the telltale nervous twitch. Right now, he stands tensely, a tommy gun in his hands, a vicious snarl on his face, his trigger finger poised as he comes face to face with a rival mob. All right, you rats, I guess I covered. Drop that gun. Put him up. So... You thought you'd pull a fast one, huh? Well, I'm going to let you have it. I'm going to rub you out, one by one. Ooh, they got me. Who done it? Louie. Louie didn't drop his gun. Oh. <laughs> okay, we'll print that. We're through shooting for today, Bert. Whew. Okay, Norman. Boy, I'll sure be glad when this picture's finished. I'm getting shell-shocked from the noise. Oh, Bert. Bert Lancaster. Here I am, Harold. <laughs> Bert, here's the props you asked for. A Tommy gun, a sawed-off shotgun, and a Luger pistol. Thanks. What do you want them for, anyway? Oh, I'm doing a comedy act for a benefit show tonight. We need some props. Well, I can send them over to the theater for no, you. No, I'll, I'll take them with me in my car. I've got to go down there now for rehearsal anyway. Thanks, Harold. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Sit down, Riley. The next bus won't be for 20 minutes. Yeah, well, I ain't waiting that long. I'm getting a lift. Come on, Gillis. Oh, no, not me. I ain't hitchhiking. Why not? Not with no pay envelope in my pocket. I don't want to get held up. Go on, who's going to hold you up? That's how they operate now. They give you lifts. What's the matter? Don't you read the papers? Like this here blonde bandit. You mean a dame? Yeah. And what a dame. Gorgeous. A face like an angel and a figure like... <laughs> <laughs> it should only happen to my wife. <laughs> well, uh, where's this dame do? What, you're waiting for a lift, see? Yeah, yeah. Along comes this here beautiful blonde in a snazzy convertible. Yeah. She smiles at you, you smile back. She winks at you, you wink back. She opens the door, you get in, and off you go. 
Uh, then what? First thing you know, you're driving home the long way. Through Mulholland Drive. <laughs> Why? You find that out when she stops the car in a lonely spot. She snuggles up to you, puts her arms around you, kisses you, and strokes your temple. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Only she's stroking it with the muzzle of a forty-five. Uh. <laughs> Goodbye pay envelope. And believe me, it could happen to you. No, not me. I'd never be that lucky. Ah, yeah, <laughs> oh, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm going to get a lift. I'm waiting for the next bus. Okay, so long. So long. Hey, lift. Uh, uh, which you... uh, maybe the next one. Hey, uh, lift, mister. Sure, hop in. Oh, thanks, mister. Uh, Blue View Terrace. Oh, really? I go right by there. Oh, that's great. Uh, my name is uh, Riley. Hi, Riley. You know, uh, your face looks familiar. I- I've seen you somewhere before. It's possible. What line of work are you in? I'm in the movies. <laughs> With that face, who are you trying to kid? <laughs> <laughs> Look, fella, I'm not kidding. <laughs> well, okay, if you don't want to tell me, that's your business. You must be doing pretty good, though, to afford a convertible like this. Well, I do okay. Say, you got enough room for your feet there? If that thing on the floor is in your way, I'll move it for you. Oh, Oh, you mean this tear Tommy gun? No, that don't bother. (laughs) (laughs) Tommy gun? Yeah, I've got a job to do tonight and I need it. (laughs) Tommy gun? (laughs) And a convertible. You, you're the blonde bandit. What? Don't kiss me, I'm married. (laughs) I, I, I thought you were a girl. Stop the car. Listen, this gun is only... Don't shoot, please. Here, here's my wallet. It's got my pay envelope in it. Take it, only don't shoot. Please, I'm too young to die. Let me go. Let me go. Hey, wait, you. Come back here. A jerk. I better find out who he is. Maybe he's got his name in his wallet. Oh, here's his business card. Chester A. Riley, Riveter. Office hours, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Sundays by appointment only. (laughs) Holy smoke, this jerk is a nut. (laughs) Prell will bring you the second act of The Life of Riley in a moment. For the big movie laugh of the year, try living The Life of Riley starring William Bendix. The picture is showing right now in New Orleans, Memphis, and Des Moines, and opens next Friday in Detroit. Don't miss it. And now back to the life of Riley, and Riley's at home now, giving his wife and son an account of his encounter with a sinister hold-up man, with slight exaggerations. There I was, Peg, face to face with this gun-mad killer. His tummy gun pressing into my ribs. Oh, Riley. Gee, Pop. I could see his finger curling around the trigger. Your money or your life, he says to me. Well, gee, Pop, what'd you do? Well, what do you think I did? I told you they're all yellow when it comes to a showdown. I look this rat square in the eye and I says, you ain't getting no money from me. Then I grabbed the gun. We're struggling when suddenly there's a blinding flash. He's pulled the trigger. He did? But luckily I saw the bullet coming and I ducked. (laughs) Another quarter of an inch. Riley. Riley, if you were in a car and the car was going all this... please, Peg, I'm telling this story. Please don't interrupt me. Yeah, yeah, go on, Pop. Yeah, well, there I was face to face with this killer. His knife pressing into my ribs. A knife? I thought he had a gun. The gun had a bayonet. (laughs) He starts pressing it into my ribs. That's when he got under my skin. So I let him have it. With what, Pop? I butted him in the belly with my head. (laughs) Then I went to work on him with my fists. Crack! Where's your nerve now, I said. Crack! Where's your guts? Crack! Where's your bravery? Where's your pay envelope? Yeah, where's your pay... (laughs) Well, where is it? Well, uh, uh, the fact is, uh, he got it. But you beat him up. Uh, well, yeah. Well, that's just it. Well... Well, when I saw him laying on the ground there bleeding, well, you know me, I'm, I'm just a softy. I, I gave him my pay envelope for hospital expenses. 
so you haven't got it. That's what I suspected all along. I just wanted to see how far you'd go with this fantastic story. You don't believe me. <laughs> Making up a yarn like that just to hide the fact that you spent your pay on some foolishness. I wouldn't mind if you came right out with the truth, but when you start giving me a fairy now, tale... Now, just a minute, Peg. You've got no right calling me a liar in front of Junior. That's okay, Pop. I don't mind. <laughs> You're all against me. I told you the truth. Maybe it didn't happen exactly like I said, but I was held up by a gangster, and I had to give him my wallet. Not that I was worried about my life, but well, I, I'd done it for you, Peg, because I knew how miserable you'd be without me. A lonely widow. But now you're going to find out what it means to live without me, because I'm leaving and I ain't coming back. Riley! Till supper time. <laughs> Women. Just can't understand him. I did it for her sake. No gratitude. After all, where would Peg be if she was a widow? The question is, where would you be? <laughs> oh, it's you. Yes, it is I indeed. Digby O'Dell, the friendly undertaker. <laughs> Greetings, Riley. You're looking. You look horrible. <laughs> I don't feel so hot, Digger. Nothing but trouble. Oh, yes, you're not the only one. Only this morning, a gang of hoodlums pilfered a poster from a movie theater and hung it on the door of my business establishment. Ooh, I was mortified. <laughs> well, why? What did the poster say? Come in and live the life of Riley. <laughs> well, that's nothing compared to what I went through today. Digger, did a gangster ever hold you up? No, but six of us once held up a gangster. <laughs> That was in my fall bearer day. Carry on, Riley. No, oh, it was awful. He had this Tommy gun, see? And he made me give him my pay envelope. When I saw that gun, I thought, sure, he was going to give me the business. You mean give me the business? <laughs> well, on top of that, I had a fight with Peg. She wouldn't believe me. She thought I spent the money. Oh, it was a terrible scrap. I ran out of the house. I think we're through, Dick. Oh, nonsense, Riley. Patch things up. Goo hoo And say to her, darling, let's live and let live, if you'll excuse the expression. Yeah, you're right, Digger. I guess I acted kind of foolish. I shall accompany you as a peacemaker. Come along. Oh, Digger, you're the best friend I got. You always help me. Well, I try to. But you're so impulsive, right? Beware lest you end up like an ex-client of mine, Mac the Lumberjack whose epitaph now reads, Here lies Mac, the lumberjack, who went out on a limb to hack it. But alas for our friend, he chopped the wrong end. Now he's wearing a lumber jacket. <laughs> well, come along. We'd better be shoveling off. Mrs. Riley? Yes. I'm Bert Lancaster. Oh, Bert Lancaster. Oh, oh. May I come in? Oh, yes, come in. <laughs> I've come to return your husband's wallet. Oh, his, his wallet? Well, I, I, I don't understand. How did you Well, get... uh, uh, didn't he say anything about, uh, about being held up? Well, yes, he did, but I... I thought he was just kidding me. I'm afraid that I was the bandit. You see, I gave him a lift in my car, and I had a prop gun, and, well, somehow he got the idea I was holding him up, so he, he handed me his wallet, and he, he ran away. Oh, you mean he just handed you his wallet? Uh -huh. I better get a gun for paydays. <laughs> oh, that husband of mine. Sometimes he acts like a... Well, he, he's really all right. I'm going nuts, I tell you. Stir crazy. I'll blow my top. <laughs> Your husband? Uh, no, my son. Sounds a lot like his father. 
<laughs> Junior, you stop that noise. Well, I gotta rehearse my play, Mom. If I don't, it. Hey, it's it, it's Bert Lancaster. Jay. Hello, Junior. Jay. Oh, Junior's acting in a play. He he wrote it himself. Oh, is he? Well, let's hear some of it, Sonny. Oh no. Go on, Junior. <laughs> he he's pretty good at it. Come on, fella. Let's hear it. Well. Well, there's this part with the fella and the girl, and he says, um, uh, Come on, babe, we're blowing town, you and me. Uh, come on, what do you say? <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's not bad. But I think you can, uh, can give it a little more. Here, look, I'll show you. Come on, baby, we're blowing town, you and me. Come on, what do you say? Wait a minute, Mrs. Riley, you read the girl's part here. Oh, no, I, I can't ask. Oh, yeah, go on, Mom. Well, all right. Okay, fine. Let's start at the top of the page. Yeah. Come on, baby. We're blowing town. You and me. Come on. What do you say, baby? Uh, you don't want me, killer. I'm not for you. Listen, baby. I ain't kidding. I'm giving it to you straight. We're blowing town, see? We're making a fresh start. Well, here's my house, Digger. You think I should go in? Indubitably, man. And cheer up. Remember... I'm right behind you. <laughs> Wait a minute. Digger, look, that car. Ah, yes. Nice paint job. Beautiful shade of black. <laughs> but it's his. The gangster's. He's in the house. He is? <laughs> but why? If he stole your wallet. The wallet. That's it. Peg's picture was in it. Young, beautiful. I don't follow you, man. Don't you understand, Digger? That's the way these gangsters are. What they see, they want... And what they want, they take. That beast has come after Peg. He doesn't know the picture is 20 years old. <laughs> come on, Digger, quick, in the house. Steady now, man. As we say in our profession, be sure of your ground before you jump in. <laughs> They're in the living room. We'll sneak up on them. Good idea. Quiet, Digger, he'll hear you coming. He'll be the first one. <laughs> Listen. What do you say, baby? You're for me, Digger. I told you. But he don't know how Peg loves me. Watch how Peg tells him off. <laughs> the minute I seen you, I said, that's for me. Your class. What do you say, honey? Honey? Now he's gonna get it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll head for the bright lights. Big dough, diamond, slinky gown. They're all yours. What do you say, luscious? Give that jerk husband of yours the air. Jerk? Now he's going to get it. Killer, I'll give you a quick answer. Give me five minutes to pack. <laughs> Looks like I'm going to get it. The plane leaves at midnight. Just you and me, baby. I got two tickets to Honolulu. Oh, yeah? Well, you better get free. Nobody can run away with my wife unless I go along. <laughs> What are you doing? Stay out of this, Peg. I'll settle this man to man. Put him up. I'm coming at you. Now, wait, Riley. Don't. Riley, get up. I didn't hit him. He ran into the door. Oh, oh he got me. The yellow ratty pulled a gun on me. Riley, get up. No, I'm done for. I can feel the hole in my head. Take your finger out of your mouth <laughs> And get out Peg, Peg, call the cops Riley, listen to me This is Burt Lancaster, the movie actor Huh? <laughs> I came here to return your wallet that you so generously gave me Huh? <laughs> He was reading that play of Junior's. Huh? You know, this guy's got a mind like a whip. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me get this straight. Lancaster, didn't you come here to run away with my wife? <laughs> of course not. What a revolting development this is. Ah, 
Doc, I was only rehearsing that play. I don't care. No more of this play acting. You've got to cut out this gangster stuff. First thing you know, you'll wind up robbing banks. Okay, Pop. Now, and I want you to go to Greenspreckle and apologize for breaking his window with your gun. Oh, and here. Here's 15 bucks to pay for the damage. And believe me, I can use this money for myself, but I'm letting you have it. Oh, thanks, Pop. You're swell. But you didn't have to do it. I was going to pay for the window with the dough in my piggy bank. That's all right, son. Where do you think this came from? <laughs> Procter & Gamble invites you to join us again next week to hear The Life of Riley with William Bendix as Riley. Tonight's script is by Alan Lipscott, Reuben Schiff, and Dick Powell. Mrs. Riley is Paula Winslow. Digger O'Dell is John Brown. Our thanks to Bert Lancaster for his visit, and good luck to him when he appears with the Cole Brothers Circus starting April 14th. The Life of Riley is produced by Irving Brecker. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Great guest appearance by Burt Lancaster. Burt had about five movies under his belt as of this appearance in 1948, so he was still new in his career. One interesting note, in 1949, so this is a year after this episode of The Life of Riley, Burt starred in a movie called Rope of Sand, which was considered the biggest movie that Corinne Calvé was ever in. So he was in a movie with Corinne Calvé. Now, if you remember, uh, Corinne Calvé was Bob Hope's guest on Wednesday's podcast. Now, her appearance with Bob Hope took place in 1951, which was three years after Burt's guest role here on, on The Life of Riley Today and two years after The Rope of Sand was made. But just an interesting connection between Mr. Lancaster and Miss Calvay. Please send your questions and comments to host at classiccomedyotr.com. Come back next Friday for the next episode of The Life of Riley and check in on Monday for the next installment of The Aldrich Family. Until next time, in the words of John Vance Cheney, the soul would have no rainbow had the eyes no tears. <laughs>